Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. I'm your host, Cardmaster Phoenix, here as always, and today I'm going to be going through the, at this point, very dated news that is the announcement of the March of the Lich King expansion, as well as the Death Knight class, the information we've been given about it, and just give my general thoughts on it as well. I hope I can make this a pretty quick video because I have a lot of other videos I'm trying to get out at this point before the expansion comes out. I want to make a video reviewing all the cards in the Path of Arthas set, um, all of the core cards from the set, uh, I'm sorry, from the class, and also one video for each of the 11 classes, now 11 classes in the game. Uh, for the March of the Lich King expansion, giving my thoughts and card reviews on them as well. Um, so, announcing March of the Lich King, Hearthstone's next expansion. Lich King returns to Hearthstone, leading his undead army in the new Death Knight class in an all out assault on the Elven City of Silvermoon. The Blood Elves won't go down easily. They are as thirsty for combat as they are for the magic of the Sunwell that they draw, the power, they, they draw power from. As the corpses pile up, the Death Knight's army swells, and so begins the March of the Lich King. A very nice little introduction there. We have a new board uh, that we get, of course, with the launch of any new expansion. Um, we get a new battle board, and this is the one for uh, March of the Lich King. Um, March of the Lich King will launch worldwide on December 6th with 145 new cards. You can find the full March of the Lich King reveal schedule on all cards that have already been revealed by visiting the card library here. Check out frequently. The page will be updated with new cards as they are revealed. New Death Knight class. The Death Knight is a new permanent addition to Hearthstone coming with the March of the Lich King expansion. Death Knights command the undead with their new hero power, Ghoul Charge. For two mana, summon a 1 1 Ghoul Charge that dies at the end of your turn. The, that Ghoul does double duty because Death, Knight gain, Death Knights gain a corpse whenever a friendly minion dies. They can then spend those corpses to power up their cards. So here we have an image and description of the Ghoul Charge hero power, as well as an example of cards with rune costs. Death Knight is a powerful, flexible class powered by three runes, Blood, Frost, and Unholy. The Death Knight's chosen devotion to those runes determines which cards the Death Knight can put in their deck. You can learn all the details about this new class effect and special deck building rules in the dedicated Death Knight introduction article. This is the deep dive article, but I will cover that, cover that a little bit later. New minion types, undead and dual type minions. Lich King commands the Undead Scourge, and these unholy masses will be Hearthstone's next new minion type, Undead, which is a brand new minion type. However, in March of the Lich King, Undead minions will appear in neutral and in the class that have aligned with the Lich King. Many cards synergize with Undead trigger and bonus effects if a friendly Undead died after your last turn, meaning either on your opponent's last turn or earlier on your current turn. In March of the Lich King, some minions will have two minion types, for undead minions, this might be a second type to represent what they were before they became undead. I like that they're giving a flavor reason for that. These will be retroactive additions, with both undead and second minion types being added to many older minions, as well as those in this expansion. That is very important. Uh, so, you know, they show Invincible as an undead beast and undead dragon. Returning keyword reborn. Some undead have reborn a returning key keyword mechanic that I want to highlight this. That will now be a regular part of the game going forward. Uh, and then, of course, they recap what reborn is because it's been so long. The first time a reborn minion dies, it is resummoned with one health remaining. The perfect keyword for representing pesky undead minions and for pumping up your corpse counter. New keyword, Mana Thirst. The Blood Elves draw more power from the Sun Well the longer they hold off the Scourge Advance. Cards with the Mana Thirst get more powerful once you reach a specified amount of mana. You don't have to spend that mana to power up the cards, you just need to access, have access to it. You just need access to it. Um, so they show three examples here. Um, in case you aren't very in touch with Hearthstone, with each Hearthstone expansion, we get a theme 
based around the mechanic. Uh, uh, we get a theme based around the expansion itself. So, for example, what Voyage the Sunken City, it what it was Colossal Minions, and we also get a new keyword with each expansion. Um, and in the Voyage to Sunken City case, um, it was Dredge. So, Mana Thirst is the keyword for this new expansion that's coming to the game in just a few days. The Sunwell login reward available now. The Blood Elves aren't the only ones able to draw power from the Sunwell. Log in the Hearthstone to start preparing for the March of the Lich King with your complimentary. The Sunwell Legendary Spell. The Sunwell is Hearthstone's first collectible neutral spell. Though there are those who struggle to control its power, the Sunwell's mild magic can offer you anything your heart desires. Add it to your collection and see what the Sunwell has in store for you. New signature cards and signature golden packs. Signature is a new cosmetic quality that cards can have, like golden or diamond, with stylized full art images starting in patch 25.0, which is when the March of the Lich King expansion releases. The signature cards will feature an icy sepia style, sepia maybe, evoking, evoking the Lich King's powers over frost and the undead. The art style signature cards within each expansion will match their representative expansion's style, and the card frame for future signature cards might also change from time to time. That is really cool, so it won't always look like this. They will change and be aesthetically based uh, and match kind of in line with the theme of the expansion. That means signature cards from future sets will look different from these ones to evoke different tones and styles. That's really cool. Signature cards can't be crafted or disenchanted. They can only be opened in packs or earned through special means. There are a total of 18 signature cards coming with the March of the Lich King, including 15 legendary cards. Two of the legendary cards will be available on the Tavern Pass, and the three non-legendary cards, cards will be earnable at, for free as part of an event with expansion with the expansion launch. After the launch of the March of the Lich King, the other 13 legendary signature cards can be opened in standard packs, class packs, March of the Lich King packs, and new March of the Lich King signature golden packs. Signature golden packs are like current golden packs, but they have a chance to include signature cards instead of only golden cards, and they have much better overall odds, odds of opening a legendary card. We do see that there's an asterisk there. Uh, so see it says, see the full odds, the odds in the disclosure on the disclosure site. The March of the Lich King pre-purchase mega bundle includes two random March of the Lich King signature legendary cards and five March of the Lich King signature golden packs. Signature golden packs will also replace golden packs in the game shop for all future expansions starting with March of the Lich King. So I will go here now and take a look at this. Um, Harson Shop. Blah, 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 blah. Um, opening a card pack in Hearthstone has five cards to your collection. There are rules in place to make sure your pack opening experience is exciting. Note these rules do not apply to many sets. Many sets are bundles with specific cards. Many sets are not packs, card packs, excuse me, and are not subject to randomness. If a mini set includes cards you already own, you will still receive those cards. Rarity and quality of cards and card drop rates. I really love that they are this transparent with this kind of information. Uh, cards found in packs can be of four different rarities, common, rare, epic, or legendary. Cards found in packs also have different cosmetic qualities. Common, rare, and epic rarity cards can be two different qualities, normal or or golden. Legendary rarity cards can be one of three different qual qualities, normal, golden, or signature. Note, diamond quality cards cannot be found in card packs. Signature quality cards can be only be obtained, slash can be obtained only from expansion set card packs from March of the Lich King expansion onward. Normal packs. When opening packs of cards, you will get a signature legendary card in an average of 180 packs. 181 packs, so signature legendary cards are in 1 in 181 packs on average. Note, signature quality cards can only be obtained from expansion set card packs from March of the Lich King 
expansion and onward. Note, once you own all signature legendary cards in an card expansion set, you will start receiving golden legendary cards in place of signature legendary cards. You will get a golden legendary card in, again, an average of 181 packs, a golden epic card in an average of 71 packs, a golden rare once in every 15 packs on average, a golden common card once in every 13 packs on average, a normal legendary card in one in every 20 packs on average. Note one legendary card is guaranteed within the first 10 packs of new card expansion. Then subsequent legendary card drops will follow the above rule. Normal epic card in five packs, one in every five packs on average. Each card pack is guaranteed to contain at least one normal rare card or better. Remaining cards will be normal common cards in average of three and a half cards per pack. You will not receive more than one copy of a legendary card until you have owned all the legendary cards in that card's expansion. So you have to open one of every legendary card before you can get a duplicate legendary, which is a really good rule. Similarly, you will not receive more than two copies of any common, rare, or epic card until you have owned two copies of all cards of that rarity in that card expansion. Crafting a card counts towards owning it, and any cards you disenchant, whether golden or non-golden, count as well. This means that if you get a card you don't want, you can disenchant it and you will not receive it again until you have all cards of that rarity from that card expansion. Golden packs and signature golden packs. Cards found in golden packs will always be golden quality. Cards found in signature golden packs will always be golden or signature quality. When opening golden or signature golden packs of cards, you would get... A signature legendary card in seven packs on average with signature golden packs only. Note once you own all signature legendary cards in a card expansion set, you will start receiving gold legendary cards in place of signature legendary cards. A golden legendary card in 20 packs on average. Note one gold legendary card is guaranteed within the first 10 packs of a new card expansion. Then subsequent gold legendary card drops will follow the above rule. Golden epic cards in every five packs on average. Each golden card pack is guaranteed to contain at least one golden rare card or better per pack. Remaining cards will be golden common cards in average of 3.7 cards per pack. Please log in and submit feedback. I will actually do this and give them some praise for that later. For now, let's go back to the main article. Pre-purchase March of Lich King, blah, 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 contains... 80 card packs, 5 sign signature packs, 2 random March of the Lich King signature legendary cards, the entire path, path excuse me, of Arthas miniset, and the Lorthamar Hunter Hero skin and card back. And it shows that all there. The March of the Lich King bundle ex includes 60 packs, 2 random Mar March of the Lich King regular legendary cards, and the Lorthamar card back. So the difference from the regular to the mega pre-purchase uh, pre bundle is you get the Hunter Hero skin, you get the Path of Arthas mini set, and your legendaries are replaced with signature legendaries, which is a straight up grade, and of course you get the 20 additional packs. This time, for the first time ever, both March of the Lich King pre-purchase bundles will also, I do want to highlight this, be available for one week following the launch of the expansion. Hooray! You can get them now to start rocking your new card back right away, or get them after the expansion goes live, whatever works best for you. I am absolutely going to give them a positive uh, review slash post feedback, whatever, on this um, 11 out of 10 correction. The breakdown of Path of Arthas card rarities is three legendary cards, one of each, three epic cards, two of each, eight rare cards, two of each, and 12 commons cards, two of each for 26 distinct cards and 49 total cards that combine with core set cards to make up three Death Knight starter deck lists. You can immediately take on to the latter. You can learn more about the Path of, Path of Arthas set in the Death Knight Deep Dive, which is what we will go to now. Um, so, Death Knights are Hearthstone's newest playable class, joining the tavern with Hearthstone's next expansion, March of the Lich King. 
Death Knights are a diverse class that can harness the powers of blood, frost, and undead to devastating unfit and the undead to devastating effects. They also have a unique class mechanic and special deck building rules. Master them all as you prepare to make the most out of your undead army. Hero power ghoul charge. Death Knights have a two mana hero power called ghoul charge. Ghoul charge summons a 1-1 ghoul with charge. Use it or lose it. The shambling ghoul falls apart at the end of your turn. Luckily Death Knights can make good use of minions that die in combat. I do like that they like always have this like kind of flavor thing with it. Like instead of just saying, oh they die at the end of your turn, they fall apart at the end of your turn. I really like that. Um, of course it shows the battle board, class mechanic corpses. Whenever a friendly minion dies, the Death Knight gains a corpse. This special class specific resource can then be used to fuel and power up some of your cards. Each friendly minion leaves a corpse behind, including minions you play, minions you summon with other cards, minions that are resurrected and or resummoned through the returning reborn keyword, and the ghouls summoned by your hero power. And it shows what the icon looks like. Class deck building mechanic. This is the meat and potatoes of all of this. Runes. You may have noticed the colored symbols around the mana costs of some Death Knight cards. These are called runes. There are three runes, one for each Death Knight spec. Red is blood, blue is frost, and green is unholy. These runes dictate which Death Knight cards can be added to your deck during deck building. When building your deck, you select a combination of three runes, which determines which Death Knight cards you can add to your deck. You can choose to fully devote to one rune, such as Triple Blood, or you can go primarily into one room while dipping into another, such as Double Unholy Single Frost. This room system allows for incredibly varied and powerful Death Knight cards, while making sure any particular deck isn't just the best at everything. Instead, each of the rooms specializes in certain types of cards and effects. I will cover this in a second. I do want to highlight that they are admitting that um, basically, uh, without directly saying it, that they did kind of make a mistake with Demon Hunter making it so that they just, uh, don't release a busted class and have to make a day one patch like they do with Demon Hunter. So this will both curb their total, uh, power ceiling as well as allow them to push cards because, uh, they can just make the more pushed powerful cards be more heavily restricted with a more taxing rune cost. Now, instead, each of the rune specializes in certain types of cards and effects. I love, love, love small flavor stuff like this, where it explains that it's not just like a rune. Each rune has something that it actively does. Blood rune. The blood rune is the tankiest rune. Blood cards tend to have board control effects. Large minions and cards that manipulate life totals, such as Patchwork, Corpse, Explosion, and Vampiric Blood. Frost Rune. The Frost Rune has powerful burst potential. Frost cards tend to have lots of spell synergies with direct damage card draw, mana manipulation, and freeze effects. And finally, the Unholy Rune. The Unholy Rune has the greatest command of, un of the undead armies. Unholy cards tend to be very good at summoning undead minions, summoning swarms of minions, and generating and spending corpses. Generally speaking, the deeper you go into a particular room, the more you can tap into the types of things that room specializes in. Some of Death Knight's most powerful cards require you to fully commit to one room, but sometimes tapping into a secondary room is a great way to cover your primary room's weaknesses which goes back to the kind of triangular format of, of the three runes and the strengths and weaknesses that are in. I really love this. Um, for instance, the Blood Rune tends to play a few big minions that are and not many small ones, so you need to decide whether you want to run the very powerful triple blood cards or if you'd rather add a single unholy rune or some corpse generators. I really like that they explained to that. Finally, there are also some Death Knight cards that don't have any rune restrictions, these cards tend to be general purpose workhouse cards, workhorse cards, excuse me, that can go into just about any type of deck. And then we have some deck builder tips. In deck building, rune selections will automatically update as you add cards to your deck. 
You can choose to either show all rooms as you tinker, or you can uncheck that option and the deck builder will dynamically filter as you add cards to your deck, automatically hiding cards that aren't incompatible with your rune selections. You can also filter your collection by a particular rune by searching for runes, uh, comma, uh, I'm sorry, um, what is that? Apostrophe, uh, where the hyphen S are replaced by B, F, or U for Blood, Frost, or Unholy. For example, the search term runes, uh, whatever that symbol is, B, B, would return all your double blood cards, and the search runes U would return all your single Unholy cards. Alternatively, you can search by the rune and enter the devotion to that rune as a number. For example, the search Unholy 1 would return all your single Unholy cards. You can also add a range. For example, a search Frost 1 to 2 would return all your single and double Frost cards. Frost is a special case because it is a rune and a spell school. That is true. I didn't think about that. To differentiate, you can now search to for a school Frost to return all Frost school spell cards. All Frost Spell School cards without also getting all the Frost Rune cards. You can also search School None to find spells that don't have any spell school. Use these tips to expertly navigate your collection and flex your deck building skills. It's your listening knowledge, but anyway. Of course, players who don't want to interact with the runes and deck building systems can continue using the easy deck code and autocomplete systems. Massive 32 card core set. With the rune system, there are only a certain amount of cards that any particular Death Knight has access to at any time. To make up for this, Death Knights will have the biggest core set of any class in Hearthstone. When March of the Lich King launches, you will be able to complete a special Death Knight prologue that follows the iconic story of Arthas Minifil's descent into darkness as he becomes the Lich King. Complete that prologue to unlock the entire 32-card Death Knight core set for free. So it has the 68 cards, so it has a breakdown, 32 core cards, 26 Path of Arthas cards, and 10 March of the Lich King cards. Path of Arthas set, when March of the Lich King launches, there will also be a one-time separate Death Knight only set available to help Death Knights catch up with the other classes in terms of card quantity called the Path of Arthas. The Path of Arthas 26 distinct Death Knight cards that are designed to be combined with the Death Knight core cards, core set cards, to form three Death Knight starter decks that you can immediately take onto the ladder. And of course, it just goes over that again. The entire Path of Arthas set is included in the March of the Lich King pre purchase mega bundle. Once the expansion goes live, the Path of Arthas set will also be available for standalone purchase in either normal. 2,000 gold or 1,500 runestones, or golden offerings, money, or 7,000 runestones. The golden version includes golden copies of all the cards on the Path of Arthas and a bonus diamond copy of the Lady Death Whisper diamond legendary card. That's really cool. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, Path of Arthas cards can't be opened from packs. They can only be purchased as part of the pre-purchase mega bundle, purchased as a standalone purchase, or crafted. Lady Death Whisper Diamond Legendary card will also be available for purchase as a standalone product. And it has the show match and twitch drops, blah 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 blah. Uh, I, th I think this is really cool, but I'm not going to really read that. Uh, and that is everything. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed me going over this huge, huge just info dump. Uh, you know... <laughs> Almost like an anime with how much exposition I just dumped onto the uh, platform here. I wanted to thank you guys all for watching my video and supporting me in any way you have. Uh, whether it's just watching this video, whether you have liked or commented, which helps me in the algorithms. Um, whether you... Subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications and continue to return to watch my future videos. Uh, regardless, big or small, I want to thank you regardless for your support and um, hope that you have a very great day and stay awesome. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Cardmaster Phoenix, signing out. See you guys next time. Have a good one.